Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar show again. And today I want to talk about eight inch SCT specifically, and maybe eight SCTs in general. Okay, so let's start. So I believe Celestron was first in the market in the SCTs in the 70s and Mead uh, followed suit. And basically, I just want to point out that I don't have a preference for each. Uh, I own both companies and I think both companies are good. Uh, they're really the only two companies um, in the world that mass produce them. Now there are some elite companies that maybe make better quality but at uh, four, five, six times the price range and in s small quantities. But of course, these two are the mass producing companies uh, as far as SCTs goes. Now your general, you know, for years, the SCT um, was, I would say it's one of the best selling telescopes in the world. Why? As you can see, an eight inch for this size is just, Amazing. Now remember too, you're getting lots of power. Both of these are about 2,000 millimeter focal length, so you're getting lots of power. The optics are enclosed. Sure, you, then you do need a, a dew cap or a dew heater, but I find because it's enclosed, the main mirror almost never needs cleaning, uh, like a regular uh, reflecting telescope with, or an open tube type of uh, SCT or uh, other Maksutovs. There are a few models that are open tube type of thing with no corrector plate, but I find these kind with the corrector plates, mirrors almost need no cleaning. Even sometimes 20, 30 year old telescope, uh, maybe the coatings are starting to go a little thin or getting weaker, but the main mirror, uh, and actually the secondary mirrors are virtually perfect since they're never open to the elements. Now it's been you know a long time. The uh, you know the SCTs came with the regular coatings, the EMC and the Starbright, and then it was uh, maybe mid two thousands uh, around there where both of these basically just came um, with the XLT coatings and it came with the ultra high contrast uh, telescope coatings. Basically, it's, it's virtually the same. And in fact, one. Uh, maker, I, I won't name who, uh, said that by having these type of now better coatings, it's equivalent to having like an extra inch aperture. Now is that 100% true? You know, maybe with better coating is a step up from the old coatings, last longer, uh, better contrast, that type of thing. And then all of a sudden, now both of these companies uh, come out with what they call like the Mead Advanced Coma cor uh, Correction and then on the Celestron Virgin they call it the Edge. So basically it's just means you know that the stars at the very edge instead of having little you know seagulls or not they're not pinpoint uh, like the traditional SCTs uh, with these new versions you know it's 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 um, the aberration of the coma uh, it's just a little bit better, tighter, uh, stars closer to the edge. I don't think it's a big deal. I've owned SCTs from the 90s, 2000, from the 8 inch up to 14 inch, and I've never really seen too big of a deal with coma in SCTs. Um, some people also complain sometimes they have uh, image shift in the focusers because it's the mirror that actually focuses, goes in and out. I've never found that to be too big of a problem anyway, either. Um, and mind you, I like both companies. I, uh, both companies have their, throughout the years, they've had good uh, telescopes. They had some uh, series that have, weren't as good, but overall, I think in general, the eight inch SCT uh, made the hobby, I, I think, more affordable and it definitely is, that's why it's the number one uh, probably telescope selling in the world, especially when you consider medium apertures and, and larger. Again, look at the size that these are for an eight inch, uh, even like an eight inch reflecting telescope, like in the traditional before used to be an eight inch F6 reflector, that would be like three times longer and you would need a pretty big mount for, for that. And that's what these 
the manufacturers had back then. And people didn't like those type of big mounts that they had back then. Um, and that's why things kind of went, you know, towards the portability side, making them smaller. Uh, yes, um, by doing that, maybe contrast goes down a, a smidgen on SCTs, but they also have a lot of pluses. You can, they can change from its natural F10 format to like a 6.3 is the most common. So basically, you're almost achieving something what an 8-inch F6 reflecting telescope can do. Uh, by changing the uh, focal ratio from F10 to 6.3 and then me they went the the side of putting then a corrector that can make it go as far as a F 3.3 for imaging and astrophotography and what uh, Celestron did is they uh, decided to take out this the central obstruction and you can put a camera there making an F2 uh, version so I think you know the 8 inch SCTs uh, again, these are the newest ones uh, with the ACF and models or the Edge models, you know, whichever. Um, personally, you're, you're paying a lot more for the Edge and for the ACF versions uh, just to correct a little bit of that coma to, closer to the very edge. I personally have never seen a problem visually uh, when using an 8-inch SCTs. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And uh, I mean, it depends too. If you guys are thinking about imaging and astrophotography, then sure, maybe um, you want to pick up the newest versions that correct for that aberration closer to the edge, uh, you know, type of thing. You can make them uh, F6.3, 3.3, whatever, because astrophotography, depending on how big your camera chip is, you're going to need a wider field of view. But these guys in the 90s, 2000s, were one of the most popular telescopes for astrophotography. You're getting a large aperture, really short tube uh, that can be mounted very easily comparing to something really long. And because you can change the, the focal ratios, uh, a few different versions, and, uh, and has so many accessories like off-axis guiding, you can put a separate guider on top or, you know, it, it's endless what you could do. That's why they, they were the uh, most popular type for uh, imaging. However, these days, I, I think more people, since the cameras are becoming more sensitive uh, and dedicated, you, a lot of people are going the way of like in clear aperture, small apochromatic instead of the SCTs. However, they can still capture a lot of stuff, especially those uh, when you need lots of power from your telescope and your camera to see those smaller uh, planetary uh, items um, and, and you know, small detail and you want, really need to blow it up, these can still come in handy. I still like them. Uh, I mean, I think for me personally, uh, portability is actually tied with aperture. Uh, you know, a lot of people, I guess they have a scale. Maybe for you guys, it just depends on where your location is. But for me, aperture and portability are actually tie number one. And that's why I like SCTs. Uh, maybe sometimes I, I show you guys a lot where um, instead of like a big reflector type of thing, uh, just because portability for me is tied with, no, with aperture. And I want something that is big but also portable. And even if I use, uh, if I lose a smidgen on contrast or wide field of view, that's okay. This is why probably a lot of us have two or three or four different telescopes, one for every type of thing. But I've always had a keen liking for the SCT. Uh, the eight inch is very manageable. These two here are about 11 or 12 pounds. So really, where are you gonna find an eight inch aperture with a 2,000 millimeter focal length f10 that you can convert it to, uh, you know, f6, and you can use two inch eyepieces. Focusing is almost never a problem with almost any accessory you throw at it because you can turn the focuser literally 30 to 40 times um, in and out, and it just never stops. So it's like you could almost uh, use it for anything. It does have a couple downfalls. Again, you need a dew cap. 
at the very minimum, maybe a dew heater. Uh, this can easily go like on a CG4, which is rated for 20 pounds. And if this guy's 11, 12 pounds, you got lots of uh, you know room to spare uh, if you're gonna do it visually. You could even go to EQ5 even better and even a bigger mount, even more rock solid. But you can go as low as an EQ4 if you really had to, if portability and visual is your main thing, uh, type of thing. I, lo I love SCTs for that thing, for that purpose. Uh, you're getting a very powerful telescope for um, a very small package. Uh, it does cost a little bit more than a reflecting telescope. I do think. From my years of experience, collimation holds much better in an SCT compared to a reflector or a, a truss daub for sure, that type of thing. The mirror almost never needs cleaning except for the corrector plate, but the corrector plate is very easy to clean. Um, in fact, you only almost ever clean as the top of the corrector plate, never behind it unless the sucker's 30 years old and you left it unopened with a cap or eyepiece in it, but you shouldn't do that with any telescope regardless. Anyway guys, so this is SCTs, why they're so popular. So you've got a Celestron uh, regular version uh, type here. This is the XLT. So it has, this is like kind of not the brand new, newest model, which is the Edge, but this is the one made just before with the better coatings. Uh, then the star bright coatings and then you got one here advanced coma free uh, type here personally I think if you guys don't want to pay I, I don't know the exact cost difference between the older ones with the XLT and the UHTC coatings versus the uh, the edge and advanced coma free coatings it might be another I, I, I'm just guessing I have not looked it up recently, but it's probably minimum in Canada. I would say at least six to eight hundred dollars more for that feature, maybe even up to a thousand dollars more. And again, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Check it out, uh, and prices change all the time. But it's probably around there. You know, between I would say six to eight hundred dollars more. Me personally, if you're visual. Uh, just get a regular SCT. It doesn't matter from which company. Uh, but maybe if you're interested in the imaging part of it, then maybe go to the ACF or the Edge version. Uh, pick whichever company you like. It doesn't really matter. I like both companies. Both companies uh, are very good. Um, they've had, you know, each company had their downfall, uh, you know, in the past. It, it doesn't matter, I, I guess. Uh, whichever one you like, pick it, have fun. But for as far as an 8-inch SCT, I find them very good. Um, would I pay extra for the uh, ACF for the Edge? Uh, probably not, because I'm more visual, and I've never seen a problem um, at the very edge type of thing. Again, most people are looking um, in the more central part of the field of view anyway. Anyway, guys, that's my thoughts. Here's the difference between two manufacturers, two 8-inch SCTs. Um, and there are some companies out there, like the Rich, Richie Christian models and other, or, you know, some without corrector plates, some with corrector plates uh, type of thing. Um, it doesn't really matter. They all have their pluses, their minuses. Of course, some of those more custom-made ones are probably going to be two to three, four times more expensive. Um, for the mass-produced people or for the general public, I think these models are more than enough for what you need. Big scope for a little package, lightweight. Joe Jaguar, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys on my channel.